Good evening, Mr. Chairman, and uh, thank you, as always, for, for the courtesy. Uh, thank you to the members of the committee, and uh, most especially, thank you to Representative Williams. I know it's been 17 years, but I appreciate the passion and the persistence behind this issue. And I urge this entire committee to lead the way in making Rhode Island the 13th state that provides, provides either driver's licenses or driving privileges to undocumented immigrants. Now, there's a strong public safety case to be made, and I think it's a compelling one, and I'll get to it in just a moment. But I'm here primarily because I, I believe not only is this important to my community, it's important for the entire state, and it's the right thing to do. I'm a citizen of this country. I was born and raised here in Providence. But my parents, they were immigrants. And in fact, they were undocumented immigrants. And I'll tell you a story that's often lost in this immigration debate. Many undocumented immigrant adults, they have citizen children. And I can tell you personally, when I was growing up, I never once did Little League, after school activities, Boy Scouts, because my family, they just never knew. They were always concerned about where they would sign us up, you know, where they would give their name, and what would be done with that list. And so because of the fear and because they felt that they had to stay below the radar, citizen children are also being affected. And I think that we can all agree that we want every single one of our children to be exposed to all the opportunities that are accessible and available to them. And I believe that welcoming and giving a helping hand to all of our residents, including undocu undocumented immigrants, does that. Also, on the public safety side, there's a strong case to be made on public safety. Not only does this require anyone who gets this driving, driving privilege to pass a test to prove that they know the rules of the law and to also demonstrate it during the exam, but to also require them to get insurance. And when they get insurance, eventually accidents do happen, and that, that protects every single one of us. Believe me, every single person here, if we are ever, God forbid, rear-ended, rear we want to make sure that the person who caused the accident has insurance, and this will help, would help us all. And this is not for just anyone. As Representative Williams mentioned, there are a number of requirements so that it's limited to folks who are doing everything right. You know, oftentimes when we talk about immigration, it's suggested that these are folks that are living outside of the law, people who don't want to comply. That couldn't be further from the truth here. These are folks who want to go through the process. They want to take the exam. They want to pay the fee. They want to get insurance. But to this point, they have been unable to do so. And certainly last, especially right now with the climate and the new policies coming from Washington, it's even more important to pass these kinds of privileges and laws. Currently, under the new priority enforcement uh, for deportation from the Department of Homeland Security, even a misdemeanor, such as driving without a license or failing to put a turn signal on, you know, any minor offense lands you in jeopardy with the potential of being deported. And, uh, splitting up families, dividing families that once again oftentimes have citizen children in the household. So there's a public safety case, but I also believe that it's the right thing to do, and it's something that will absolutely benefit every single Rhode Islander. Thank you all. Thank you, Mayor. Any questions? Rep Representative Coughlin. We on now? My alive? First of all, you said in your own background as a kid that you didn't sign up for baseball or basketball or any other activities because your parents were concerned about lists and where those lists might go. Is that correct? That's correct. I caught that right. Okay. Secondly, you're talking about these new policies coming down from Washington, and you referred to misdemeanors being the cause of someone being, some undocumented individual being picked up and put into the Removal or deportation, I think, is the removal is the term they, they're using now. If I understand this bill correctly, we're going to have a database out there 
Now, let's back up a minute. I read this weekend where visa overstays may also be caught up in that group. If they've been, I think, overstayed less than two years or something, they could be picked up for removal. It's driving this question. With this type of a license, I'm assuming there's going to be a database somewhere with these individuals' minimum names and addresses. What assurances can we give these people that if ICE comes in, let's say they use the court system, and they get hold of this database, what kind of guarantees can we give these people that ICE isn't going to march in with lists and just pick them off like fish in a barrel? That's a very good question, Representative. And I would hope that as part of this, either part of the law or administratively, it's made clear that uh, these uh, that these databases and these lists would never be um, handed over to ICE. There are a number of cities throughout the United States that have adopted municipal IDs, and they have run across this, ex this exact same issue. And uh, uh, in the ordinances and in the policies where they've adopted municipal IDs, they've given that assurance. And, uh, the, and, they've been, and they've been successful because the community, the immigrant community, has trusted uh, the municipalities that have made that commitment to them. So I hope that once, if and when this is rolled out, that the state either encoded in the statute or through policy also gives that insur that, uh, that, those assurances because that's going to make all the difference in whether it's successful or not. And if under the supremacy clause these city or state laws are found inferior under the U.S. Constitution to federal law, what's going to happen then? So I don't know if any – so we wouldn't be the first state to do this. And uh, I don't know of any, of any state, and I do believe it hasn't happened, where they've been uh, required to hand over any of these lists. Yeah, I now, you, I think you are suggesting that the policies are changing in Washington, and suppose they more aggressively try to request, try to go after these lists. I do not know if they're planning that. I do not know the state of that law. But I do know that we can make it part of our policy that we would not honor those requests. And I would hope that those assurances are made. I'm not going to argue with you tonight, but I think we both made our points. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Any other questions for Mayor Laza? Oh. Representative McEntee. Oh. Sorry. Um, actually, this question isn't necessarily for you, Mayor. I think it's more for uh, Representative Williams. But I was, um, and I, I do, I do worry about what uh, Representative Coughlin is uh, concerned about: it, creating a database which makes it even easier for ICE to just come in, pick off certain people. But um, you know, you had a good answer to that. So, but my question to um, Rep. Williams is. There's five different categories that they have to provide evidence of uh, to the Division of Motor Vehicles. Am I correct? And the, um, the fifth one, if I can find it again, the fifth one you put in the bill files an affidavit with the Division of Motor Vehicles attesting that such applicant has filed an application to legalize their immigration status or will file such an application as soon as they are eligible to do so. How would you prove that, uh, the will file? I, I can get the, the first part of that, but I'm wondering um, how a person would prove that they will file. Well, and and well, when do they become eligible to file? You're eligible to file at any time you have the proceeds to go and obtain an attorney and or someone that can assist you to do that. Mm -hmm. So they will... It's almost to say, I am um, going, you, you are going to give me the trust. You supported me with the privilege, so I'm going to hope that you also, with that privilege, you're mm. going to trust me to do what I'm going to say do. We often, often, more than not, in this chamber, we pass legislation, we sponsor it, and we pass it in here with the hopes and trust 
for those whom we are doing the legislation for. Mm -hmm. It's no different than those legislations that you and I have voted for that has mm -hmm. come through this chamber. And I appreciate that, but the problem is I've dealt with the Rhode Island Division of Motor Vehicles many times in my practice as an attorney and also as a private citizen, and I don't, have never seen them just trust that you're going to do something. I mean, you either have to do it, you have to show proof that you've, uh, you know, gone through some kind of training or you've gone through your DUI school or the list of many things. I mean, they don't just trust that you're going to do something. That, that just does, doesn't work with them. This and is I, the Department of the DMV? Is yeah. Person. When you go to get a license or you go to get your renewal, whether you lost your license at a DUI or if you just getting your license the first time, there's very little trust that goes on. Documentation is everything. So I'm just, I just think maybe, I, I don't know how you would... Uh, that number five where it says, or will file such an application as soon as they are eligible to do so. I just don't know how that could possibly work with them. <laughs> yeah, now that's a, Mary, that's, a fair, that, that's a fair, that's a fair question. And for what it's worth, uh, I believe this language tracks the language in the um, in-state tuition mm -hmm. uh, policy as well. Uh, they, ha they also have to show and prove that they are in the process of obtaining uh, legal residency. And so, um, it has worked in that context. I don't know if the language directly tracks, but something uh, along those lines I think, can, I think can work. And I have in possession a letter from the Division of Motor Vehicle stating, and I would hope that each one of you have a copy because it was certainly sent to you, and that tells me you did not read it to inform you of the facts that was sent. Um, Dear Chairperson Keeble, the DMV writes in support of House Bill 5686, an act relating to motor and other vehicles operators license. Would you like me to continue to read it? Just know that I would like it to be entered in the record. Also received one from the Division of State Police and another from Governor Raimondo in support of this bill. So, um, Representative McEntee, the division, I would say, has a great plan to address your concerns and others. And I'm confident that they will. Any other questions? Representative Price. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, yeah. So um, I guess the, I don't know, the insurance thing has kind of raised it, raises an eyebrow for me. Um, if someone's here illegally or undocumented um, and they go to obtain a, some insurance, I mean, how, do they, how does the insurance company even know, you know, who they are, where they came from, other than the fact that they're just here and, you uh, um, <clears throat> And it, I guess, could you answer that? If, if that's a question for you, I'm not sure. Yeah, so typically, um, what I know has, has worked in other contexts, and I would imagine it, it would be similar uh, with insurance, is, for example, with law enforcement. The Providence Police, Municipal Police, the State Police, if you have a, a consular card or if you have a, um, uh, a passport, if you have um, uh, an international form of ID, uh, those, are, uh, those are accepted for law enforcement and public safety purposes. I would imagine that uh, the insurance companies would use those as well. Um, so there are ways to verify that the person is who they are, um, even if they don't have a locally administered ID. One more question. So. Um, <clears throat> So say this does pass, the, and uh, Providence has uh, already been declared a sanctuary city, as we all know it, and you uh, acknowledge that in your press releases. Do you think this will foster um, even a more growing population of um, illegal and undocumented uh, people, you know, coming to the state and, um, you know, seeing the, you know, the doors open, you know? 
So, good question. And uh, the, um, in every state where this debate has come up, that's been one of the concerns. Are we sending a message that you know, encourages undocumented Im immigrants to come to our state? The truth is that a number of research groups have looked at this, and there is no evidence that uh, folks are moving to a particular city or to a state because they can obtain a driver's license or driver's privileges uh, or driving privileges. So we, we haven't seen that. Now, with that said, I do want to clarify exactly what it does mean that Providence is a sanctuary city. You know, certainly, I am proud to say that Providence is a sanctuary city, but the truth is that when people say sanctuary city, they mean all kinds of different things. We're using the same language, we're using the same terms, but it's like we're you know, uh, speaking different languages. When I say that we're a sanctuary city, what it means is that our police officers they're not going to ask folks about their immigration status. So if we pull someone over because they forgot to, to use their turn signal, you know, they'll get a ticket just like anyone else, but we're not going to ask them if they have, if they have legal papers. Um, I think that sort of on the other side, there's almost this caricature about it, that um, you know, when we say sanctuary city, um, we're made out to seem as though we're inviting criminals into our city. And if the criminal is undocumented, you know, you get extra points. We want you even more. No, that's not true. You know, nothing could be further from the truth. The truth is that every municipality, every city in the United States, our priority is to make sure that violent criminals are caught and are behind bars. And if they're undocumented, they should be deported. There is no debate there. But the truth is that when we say sanctuary city, we mean very different things. And as a city, I will resist and we will object to any measure that takes our scarce law enforcement resources and causes us to deprioritize focusing on violent criminals. And uh, 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 simply, as my police chief has said, as police chiefs throughout the country have said, uh, uh, we should focus on those folks who have violent criminal records and not focus on, for example, uh, people who have forgotten to put a turn signal or forgot to fully stop at a stop sign. Thank you, Mayor. Representative Price. Uh, thank you again, Chairman. <clears throat> so you're saying that uh, undocumented criminals um, should be deported? Absolutely. Wouldn't, uh, would that be in line with our current administration's uh, policy on uh, um, sanctuary cities as far as, and, and I know you have we, the definition of sanctuary cities is, you know, different in some places, but... Um, So it sounds like the, you're in concurrence with the uh, undocumented criminals being deported as our current administration at the top, Donald J. Trump, is uh, proposing. Right. So the, they don't have a sanctuary city policy because they haven't defined what sanctuary city, sanctuary city means. And uh, you know, I had the opportunity to meet recently with uh, uh, Secretary, Secretary Kelly from the Department of Homeland Security, and that's what we asked him. We're simply asking for clarity. Let us know exactly what you mean when you say sanctuary city so that we know where we stand and where we don't stand. Now, one change in the current administration from the Obama administration was that uh, Obama had the priority enforcement program, and uh, they targeted violent criminals, and that's where they concentrated the bulk, perhaps um, all of their, of their uh, ICE enforcement tools. Uh, the, uh, the new attorney general has signaled that they're going to go further down the list of priorities, not just violent criminals, but folks who have committed other crimes, uh, potentially even misdemeanors, potentially even traffic, traffic violations. So that, that's definitely a concern. And as I mentioned, as at, a, at a city level, we oppose anything that takes our law enforcement resources away from focusing on criminals and violent criminals and has us chasing folks who are living otherwise law-abiding lives.